लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन गुड डे एंड वेलकम टू केवल किरण क्लोथिंग लिमिटेड क्यू थ्री एंड नाइन मंथ एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल एज अ रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट लाइन विल बी इन द लिसन ओनली मोड एंड देर विल बी एन ऑपर्चुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड शुड यू नीड असिस्टेंस ड्यूरिंग द कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल प्लीज सिग्नल एन ऑपरेटर बाई प्रेसिंग स्टार देन जीरो ऑन योर टच टोन फोन प्लीज नोट दैट दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस इज बिंग रिकॉर्डेड before we begin a brief disclaimer the presentation which keval care and clothing limited has uploaded on the stock exchange and the website including the discussions during this call contains or may contain certain forward looking statements concerning keval care's business prospects and profitability which are subject to several risks and uncertainties and the actual result could materially differ from those in such forward looking statements i now hand the conference over to mr human chain join managing director thank you and over to you sir good good afternoon everyone on behalf of keval current clothing limited i wa- i welcome everyone to the q3 and 9 month fy24 earning conference call of the company joining me on this call is mr pankaj jain and our investor relation team i hope everyone had an opportunity to took at our result the presentation and result release have been uploaded on the stock exchange and our company's website i am pleased to inform that we have demonstrated resilient performance despite muted consumer demand and challenging market condition it is important to highlight that we have witnessed double digit growth in volumes as well as value across product categories of the denim shirt t-shirt and trousers showcasing the strength of the company's brand to connect with consumer and the designing capability of the company the growth was affected on account of the winter's wear segment which saw slower pick up on account of delayed onset of peak winters we have been able to surpass our budgeted profitability despite overall general slowdown witness in the market on the account of lower footfall and warmer winters coming to the detail of our financial performance highlights for the quarters and nine months stand alone perform- performance highlights for q3 fy24 revenue from operations for q3 fy24 grew by 0.6% to rupees 200.2 crores as compared to 199.1 crores in Q3 FY23 gross pro- gross profit grew to rupees 86.7 crore in Q3 FY24 as compared to rupees 80.9 crore in Q3 FY23 gross margin for Q3 FY24 improved to 43.3% as compared to 40.6% in Q3 FY23 EBITDA EBITDA for Q3 FY24 grew by 15.8% to rupees 38.9 crore as compared to rupees 33.6 crore in Q3 FY23 EBITDA margin for the Q3 FY24 expanded by 250 BPS to an impressive 19.4% as compared to 16.9% in Q3 FY23 pet for Q3 24 grew by 23.4% to rupees 33.3 crore as compared to rupees 27 crores in Q3 FY23 pet margin for Q3 FY24 expanded to 15.9% as compared to 13.1% in Q3 FY23 stand alone performance highlight for 9 month fy24 revenue from operation for 9 month fy24 grew by 10.5% to rupees 641.1 crore as compared to rupees 580 crore in 9 month fy23 gross profit grew to 275.4 crores in 9 month fy24 as compared to rupees 241.4 crores in 9 month fy23 gross margin for 9 month fy24 expanded to 43% as compared to 41.6% in 
नाइन मंथ एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री एबिटा फॉर नाइन मंथ एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर ग्रू बाय नाइनटीन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट टू रुपीज वन थर्टी फोर पॉइंट एट करोड़ एज कम्पेयर टू रुपीज वन वन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व पॉइंट नाइन करोड़ इन नाइन मंथ एफ आई ट्वेंटी थ्री एबिटा मार्जिन फॉर नाइन मंथ एफ आई ट्वेंटी फोर एक्सपांडेड बाय वन फिफ्टी बीपीएस टू एंड इम्प्रेसिव As compared to 19.5 percent in nine month FY23, pet for nine month FY24 grew by 33.3 percent to rupees 116.9 crore, as compared to rupees 87.7 crore in nine month FY23. Pet margin for nine month FY24 increased to an impressive 17.5 percent. As compared to 14.88 percent in nine month FY23. Further, I am pleased to share that the board has declared first interim dividend for the financial year 2023-24 at 20 percent, that is rupees two per share. In line with. endeavor to invest further on excelling our brand presence and keep a balanced distribution strategy we have almost reached our target addition of killer brand ebios with a net additional of 72 stores during the 9 month period and taking our total tally of ebios to 483 as on december 31st 2023 we are also working on strategy to convert our existing kelon store to single brand store of killer or integrity lawman looking forward with the ongoing improvement in market scenario couple with our first set of dispatch for killer junior our kids were focus brand in q4 fy24 we believe to be back with around 15 to 18 percent revenue growth in q4 leading to our fy24 closing with satisfactory double digit growth with this i leave the floor now open for the q and a session thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Varun Singh. Please go ahead, sir. Am I audible? Yeah. Uh, yeah okay uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity uh, my question emant uh, sir uh, uh, is on the winter wear uh, impact on the overall uh, revenue uh, so a uh, kind of two questions to this uh, first is what would be the like to like growth in the retail channel for us and secondly in winter wear uh, would be what percentage of overall revenue uh, for us uh, uh, in the uh, third quarter Hi Varun, this is Pankaj here. Yeah, hi Pankaj. Okay, uh, the like to like growth uh, in terms of tertiary sales of my entire EBO stood at four percent on a nine monthly basis. Okay. Okay, and second to answer, uh, generally, uh, uh, Winter West contribution in quarter three is the most biggest. It contributes more than 20 percent of the entire category uh, on of the entire quarter during that period. However, if you average it out over a uh, period of full year, okay, it uh, uh, it comes into single digits. Okay, okay, understood, understood. And uh, what would be the accessories uh, contribution to us? Accessories like overall business of the total year contribution around six to seven percent. Six to seven percent. Right, understood. And my uh, second question is on the K Lounge store conversion. Mm -hmm. So, as the minister was mentioning that uh, we would be converting it to a single brand uh, store. So, like in how uh, how are we thinking about this conversion? Uh, so, for example, of all, I mean, uh, assuming hundred K Lounge stores, I mean, I know the number is more than hundred. 
and uh, for simplicity uh, uh, if we say 100 tours we need to convert so what a percentage of that would be uh, converted to a killer store what percentage would be converted to maybe the uh, lawman or integrity and uh, what is the time period of you know maybe looking at 100 i mean uh, converting all uh, all the stores to single brand okay the the stores generally okay they are close to right now 174 odd stores of kilonges each will look at individually okay we are doing this in a phase manner so almost it will take an a year's period to complete this conversion totally at least a year's period okay now when you go looking at okay which brand it will be converted to okay that has not yet been decided we have been discussing depending on the uh, the brand mix in that particular store in that particular area Okay, and so, but none of the stores we will start. I mean, it will only be converted, meaning that we have got the locations okay. right. Only the we brand. Some may get uh, okay, discontinued also because of okay uh, the the store aging. I would say the store aging is more than five years of most of the stores of the, the, all the Kelonges. Okay, it will be okay. more than five some years. Some may do get uh, discontinued, but that will be hardly a proportion of the total uh, total number of stores. Yes, yes, yes. Understood, understood. And my last question is on Killer Junior. Mm. Uh, so, uh, like, if you can give us some understanding with regards to how we are budgeting, or uh, like, uh, uh, maybe from one to two year point of view, what percentage of our revenue we think it is possible for this uh, category to become for us? Varun, okay, it's too early to comment on Killer Junior right now. Okay, the first, okay, when we had gone for our order sheet structure, okay, we have received a good response. Okay, let the dispatch see. Okay, let evaluate the secondary numbers and maybe, okay, second quarter of the next year period would be the right period to evaluate out where we are standing on this. Okay, okay, understood, understood, sir. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you and wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Himanshu Padhyay from O3 Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. And uh, yeah, Pankaj, there is uh, one thing. The last quarter we commented on K launch. Okay. Yes. Next competition with MBU and MBU has evolved to indoor shop and shop. Okay. Correct. Can you explain slightly in more detail? And uh, because I could not understand uh, what was uh, what you were uh, uh, trying to explain, so sorry for that. But if you can help me, that. And, what I'm uh, trying to understand here is what. Okay, I'm trying to understand your question first, Himanshu. Okay, are you trying to understand whether okay, uh, why did I open Kerala's on the initial phase structure? Is that what you want trying to understand, or what I'm going to do ahead? Is that what you're trying to understand? No, see, I got the point that initially K launch was uh, in small cities to compete with MBO. Okay, then you stated that MBOs have evolved. Okay. Correct. So how have they evolved? Uh, okay, and uh, what has changed? Okay, in terms of MBO, because okay. of which okay. we need to relook at our our K launch uh, store strategy. So that is what I am trying to understand. In that period, okay, those those cities which were majorly tier two, tier three, or tier four cities, those cities had not yet evolved and they didn't have brand exposure. So generally, all the stores, family-owned stores, were, were wherever they were selling, they were selling a set of multiple brands. And this is how the Kelon's concept had come into picture at that time. But now, when you go to these stores, they have already exposed themselves. Okay, like uh, EBO stores have also coming into tier two, tier three, and tier four. So now what has happened is they have got well, retail has been exposed to such cities. So now okay those stores which were family owned stores may be generally co contributing to all all categories or maybe all brands in a, a set format of 800 to 1000 square feet. They have evolved to a 5000 or a 6000 square feet family owned stores where they are selling ladies kids wear men's wear everything together and in a shop and shop in a very organized format. And this is where we are going, looking at taking ahead K launch four. Okay. So okay. K, okay. So that's why you said that K launch the sizes will also be relooked and redesigned yeah. and replanned. K launch is what the sizes of 800 to are close to around 1500 square feet. So okay, they are asked for a retail single brand retailing now. So that's the reason I am looking at conversion. Okay. 
and out of this 174 stores of K launch, uh, almost everyone would be in size lesser than 1500 square feet. Yeah, most of them, close to around 98 or 97 percent of the stores are less than 1500 square feet. Okay, so that's why almost everyone will uh, be changed to killer or uh, let's say lawman. Okay, so they will definitely look at, I mean, I'm saying that, okay, the store aging has also been more than five years period for most of them. So I was anyways looking at revamping of the stores. Okay. And uh, see, most, most of our... Uh, Yes, Manshu. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Manshu. Yeah. Uh, can I speak now? Because yeah, there yeah. was some. Yes, your audible, sir. Yeah. So what I was saying was uh, most of our uh, K launch and killer brand uh, EVOs na, are franchisee owned, franchisee operated. Okay. What are the franchisee owners' thought process in terms of uh, K launch? How are they thinking and what are they saying that, uh, what sizes they think they want to do or is there any feedback they are giving on K-Launch because we are re-evaluating that whole product and we'll be re coming up with that K-Launch. So some thoughts on uh, the feedback from the uh, franchisee owners and how are they thinking? We have been trying to explain them for this conversion, okay, but during this period, okay, the uh, killer exclusive stores have also been, okay, uh, opened in tier 2, tier 3 and tier 4 cities. So I have been showing them their, this numbers to them and that has become easy. So that's why we said that we'll be doing things in a pilot phase, not one at a time structure till here. So whenever we do this, we have been explaining that, okay, this has been the performance and this is your performance, okay, where you have been monitoring. So it was becoming easier for me for conversion. Some have been resilient, okay, not to go ahead with or when to take that call for. And that's why we are giving them time. At least they'll see one phase of the people who will be shifting over and then, okay, decide on the other phase. And generally, the larger format K launch, what we want to launch, will these be completely different franchisee owners? And have we started working in market, trying? So the commercial, the perspectives, everything will be a different format. Okay, I said that, okay, the management is still taking a con on how the entire model will be. Okay, when we are set with that, okay, definitely uh, we'll come back to you on that. Okay. And uh, one question on, uh, though I understand it is still new, but what is our sales or distribution strategy for Killer Junior? Because what we see is uh, earlier who were our distributors or MDOs and all those, they were generally in small towns catered to only men or uh, uh, kids wear or separate stores. Okay, So are we going initially only with our distributors who are taking the product or we are adding new distributors for kids wear or exclusive uh, who sell only kids wear? First of all, okay, when you said regarding the NBA perspective, kids wear, the, the, the primary perspective of the channels would be MBO and LFS. That's one. Okay. And okay, MBO has been growing for us. Okay. And okay, uh, it will be a mix of all distributors. It will be a mix of the current distributors as well as new distributors. Okay. Okay. So we have started adding new also. Yep. Okay. Thanks uh, for further queries. I'll join back the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Bevel from Subcom Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. A uh, couple afternoon. of questions. Uh, sir, since, uh, you know, since last four or five years, uh, we have been witnessing uh, late winters. Now, uh, every player, be it in the FMCG segment or innerwear, segment selling thermal wares or even the garment uh, players like you all have faced problems. Now, uh, nowadays winter generally comes in the January month and, uh, you know, even in the second half of January month and every player starts uh, their EOSS uh, in December month. So in that scenario, sir, uh, what would be your future strategy on winter products? Now, uh, assuming that winters will always be late, you'll have to come out with an early EOSS. So how are you going to, you know, make margins on the winter product? Because now it it, it seems that this segment will always, uh, you know, face margin pressures. 
So would you increase your prices to that extent that even if you have to opt for uh, early EOSs, you can still make reasonable margins? Or in order to be competitive, this will always be a low margin product for you and you are okay with the volatility uh, going forward. So so my, uh, so my, in a nutshell, what is your future strategy on the winter products? Okay. Okay. Uh, first, okay, we have to answer the question is whether we can go away with this category. Okay, uh, as a retail format as well as uh, okay winter as a capital uh, the season, you definitely cannot go away with this category, irrespective of how the business is. That's okay. first aspect. Okay, the percentage mix can definitely vary. Okay, when you said about the price mix and structure, yes, definitely there has been a shift over in terms of winter wear. Okay, in terms of the uh, months. Okay, here this time okay, maybe it was not extreme winter, but the pre-winter was fantastic this time. So you have to evaluate all the balances, checks and balances and go, go ahead with. Regarding the new pricing, uh, whether the category will be there, the mix, the percentages, okay, we are yet to take a call for the next season. Okay, maybe okay, quarter two would be the right period for us to define whether, okay, because we'll know exactly what has been the carried forward stock, okay, how the winter went, went how, what was the sell throughs, and that would be the right, okay, after getting the, all the trend analysis, it would be better to answer that question for. Um, no, again, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm slightly looking out for a, dip, you know, uh, answer to my question is that, uh, uh, will you assume that winters will always come in January and then you will form your strategy? No, or you... not what we look at. Okay, we will definitely plan. I said, as I said, that winter as a category you can't go away with. That's one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, okay, what percentage mix you will plan is a secondary question. So, do you plan to reduce the percentage mix? Would be I, I need to evaluate on an overall basis what has been the carried forward also. Okay, this I will come to know after the season is over. Okay. 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 So, uh, second question is, uh, you know, since last couple of quarters you have been discussing on some potential acquisition. So, uh, what's the update on the same? Are we still, uh, uh, you know, uh, contemplating it or looking out for? Players, or what's the status on the same? If you can highlight, we are now. Still evaluating the perspective, Ankit, on that. The same thing. Uh, okay, still evaluating. Ankit, the process is starting. It's not that our process has been closed. जैसे भी कोई भी अच्छा कोई हमारी डील हो जाएगी हम अनाउंस करेंगे ही करेंगे और हम लोग ऐसा नहीं कि हम रुके हुए हम वो जो अनऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ के लिए अगर हम ब्रांड रिक्वायर की बात कर रहे हैं तो हम लोग का द प्रोसेस इज इज ऑन नो सो व्हाट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट यू मस्ट बी इवैल्यूएटिंग इट बट द द टिकट साइज ऑफ द एक्विजिशन वुड इट बी लार्ज स्मॉल विल इट यू नो आवर करंट कैश बैलेंस वुड इट बी सफाइस टू दैट I don't want to comment till the thing, uh, things are already fallen in place. Okay. Okay, okay. And how are you looking at the uh, current quarter uh, growth rates considering that uh, there would be the end of season sales in the winter products which might have some pressure on the margins but at the same time your kids junior uh, products would be there on the shelf. Right. So I so, feel that okay, we'll be able to achieve for this quarter, okay, 18 to 20 percent growth, and the EBITDA margins will also be maintained for this quarter. EBITDA margins for this quarter uh, again in that 18 to 20 percent range. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you know, I was just uh, wondering that uh, there would be pressure on the winter wear products, and at the same time, you you'll be ramping up your uh, kids uh, junior. You know, a product. So that would could be pressure on margins, or you still feel that uh, you'll maintain it because last year it was around 19.6. So I feel that okay, I'll be able to manage the margins. Okay, 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 okay. And uh, uh, next year again, should we look at uh, 18 to 20 percent top line growth with similar margins? Is it is it fair to assume? I like to say that okay, we'll okay markets. Looking at the market scenario, we will re uh, okay what's that? Evaluate in such a way that we say that the number should be around 15 to 20 percent. I will increase the base structure there. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. All the best. Thank you.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anik Mitra from Phenomics. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, good afternoon. So my first question is related to the conversion of tour. Uh, so what kind of uh, top line growth and uh, impact in the margin we can witness uh, with this conversion of tour? This is my first question. Uh, how does that relate to the margin structure? There will be a conversion perspective, okay, where Kilonge is already selling killer as a major proportion. So I don't think there will be a change in a proportional change in revenue, maybe there, because the performance would be a little better in terms of the ASP, but I don't think there will be a change in margin. Okay. Thanks. Got it. Uh, and, sir, uh, uh, you are referring 18 to 20 percent growth uh, in Q4, FY24, in the top line. 15 to 15 to 18 percent is what I'm saying. 15 to 18 percent uh, uh, in the uh, like for Q4, FY24. Q4. So is it year on year or month on month? Uh, sorry, quarter on quarter. Why 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 why? Okay, and. Uh, uh, 15 to 20 percent, uh, another 15 to 20 percent for uh, FY25. Yes. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jatin Chawla from RTL Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is, uh, you, for 4Q, for you, you've guarded for a reasonable pickup in revenues. Uh, so, are you seeing any signs on the ground of uh, this weak consumer sentiment that we have had for the last few quarters uh, starting to turn around? There has been a uh, sluggish movement in the consumer market. But we are looking that okay, quarter two will still be able to, uh, quarter four will be still be able to achieve the numbers of okay, 15 to 20 percent growth perspective. ऐसा होता है कि उसमें हमारा समर का सप्लाई स्टार्ट हो जाता है तो मुझे नहीं लगता कि हम लोग का ना 15 टू 20 परसेंट हमारा ग्रोथ आएगा ही आएगा क्योंकि पूरा फ्रेश सीजन है स्टार्टिंग है सो वी थिंक कि हम लोग उसको अचीव कर पाएंगे तो सर आप बेसिकली अपने एफर्ट्स पर ज्यादा बैंक कर रहे हैं राधा दिन के मार्केट में कुछ पिकअप आ जाएगा Market understanding has also been there. We have been closing structure really. Okay, the pipeline also we are looking at, and that's why we are giving a revised estimate. That's why we said that okay, we'll be growing on the fourth quarter by 15 to 18 percent, right? Right, right. Yeah, no, no. My commentary was just, uh, you know, uh, from an industry perspective also, that whether are we seeing any early signs of things starting to turn around. From what you are saying, it seems that is not the case. This is kind of more company specific efforts that uh, that you are putting in. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. Uh, my second question uh, is, you know, you uh, the brands that you have, Killer, Lawman, and the Integrity, uh, I'm new to the company. If you could kind of spend two minutes just, you know, broadly explaining the positioning of each of these brands in the marketplace. As far as killer is concerned, killer caters a premium price point. Like uh, denim prices range from 2799 to 3899. Lawman cater to fashion and party wear segment. Denim prices range from 2199 to 2999. Integrity caters to premium mass market. Denim range around 1799 to 2499. And easy is cater to casual office wear uh, segment. Got it. Got it. The brand have a different segment, different price point, and different categories. Understood. And in the last two, three years, we have seen Zudio really scale up uh, very fast. So, has there been any impact on your kind of you know mass uh, brands? Uh, the Zudio is kind of like it. As far as Zudio is concerned, Zudio is mainly in the retail chain, uh, only in the retail chain uh, format. And their price is different than what we are selling in the market. Our uh, price point is different than the Judeo's price point. So I don't think so. The Judeo is impact uh, any anything on our sales. Okay, understood. Understood. Okay, thank you. 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 Thank you
is great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Chiraksha from White Pine. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So my first question is uh, with respect to your store edition. Uh, so you are closer to your phase one target of 500, 525 kind of a number. So how do you look at it uh, from here on? And also if you can comment on your distribution, uh, so you had, if I recall, like 80 or 90 distributors serving some 3,000 odd MBOs. So how are you looking at that from here on? This is the first question. Uh, on the retail front, we, as we said, there will be having 80 to 100 stores, okay, year on year perspective, and we are in line with that, that's one. Secondly, on the MBO perspective, MBO has also been growing uh, as, along with the company. So from here on, we are still looking for 80 to 100 stores, that's, one, that's how we should have part on annual basis. Only on that's EBO basis, right? Yeah, EBO basis, we are looking to add uh, 80 to 100. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second question is, uh, uh, yes, uh, if I look at your Q2 and Q3 results, okay, uh, if you can just comment on your realization mix, uh, because uh, in Q2, if I look at it, your genes contribution was lower YOI and your ASPs were down. In Q3, genes contribution has seen significant jump on YOI basis. Your still ASPs are significantly lower. Uh, realization uh, that, you, that you give in the presentation. So, uh, how should one look at it? If you can give a make a comment on that, it would be. Well. So, so, if you are looking at four categories, okay, on my core categories, which is jean shirt, t-shirt, trouser, on a nine-month basis, I have been growing on all the four categories. The mix has changed, okay, in terms of winter wear, and that's the reason, okay, uh, 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 the average ASP is giving a wrong mix structure for you, to you. Okay, so we are saying the Q3 had a slightly adverse interwork contribution. That is what is driving this ESP. The winterwork category actually has been, uh, okay, is a lower, uh, is a higher ESP product. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you are saying that Q in Q3 F24 current quarter versus last year. Yes. So this year the winterwork contribution has been significantly lower as compared to last year. Which is true. That is the reason your ASVs have gone down from 767 to 681. Oh. That is the primary reason. That, that is one of the reasons. Second reason would also be, okay, the total mix is a combination of apparel and accessories. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that would be another uh, another reason. Fair point. I, I just missed that. The one last thing, uh, you made a comment that given the market scenario, you are looking at uh, 15 to 20% growth next year. So are you relative versus last two quarters you are turning more positive on the market scenario or how we should, what, what, what was your intent when you made that comment? Sir? Hello, Hello. Hello. If you look at my number structure, as I said, for the nine-month basis, my all the four categories, which are my co-categories, has been growing. And that's the reason I'm saying that my first two quarters or maybe the next year period, I'll be growing at 15 to 20 percent. Except for winter wear, okay, which was, uh, okay, planned for, uh, okay, it has changed out otherwise. So whatever we have to plan is for the quarter three. Quarter two will not be a problem. Thing. No, so, uh, okay, so my question was more with the market rather than company. We understand that uh, you are striving to see 20 percent kind of a growth. Mm -hmm. You are saying that the subdued market environment is your base assumption on which you're targeting 15-20% kind of a volume growth. Is okay. that the way we should look at it? That there's no major improvement or deterioration okay. in the market outlook? I'm saying that, okay, we will be at this percentage. There's two, three things. If we are killer junior kids launch, we will get the sale impact in Q1 or Q2 next year. So that's why we say we will grow by 15 to 20 percent. Plus, see, every time you cannot say that the market, every time the market sentiment will low. Maybe the market sentiment will also better than what the Q3 is. Okay. Okay. So if the market sentiment turns better, then this number could actually see a signal, could see an uptick. So we are also one which should launch killer junior, na? So उसका भी sell तो कहीं ना कहीं impact करेगा. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of AJ Lakhani, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my questions uh, were on the retail and non-retail growth. If we look at uh, you know our retail performance, we have been down year on year by eight percent despite adding stores. Uh, so any commentary on you know what is happening in the retail segment, whether it is the EBO which is pulling it down or LFS channel which is pulling our performance down? I beg to differ. Okay, on a nine-month perspective, retail has been growing. Sir, my question was uh, regarding this quarter. quarter, right? Yeah. Okay, the quarter, okay, the EBO has been growing. EBO is not a percentage. Okay, since retail is a mix of retail and LFS, that's the reason it has been pulled down. That's the only reason. Okay. So, uh, any specific... Uh, you know, comments on the LFS channel which has sort of pulled down our performance. Is it related to uh, certain product as winter wear or, you know, certain stocking which has not happened in, uh, you know, our, with our LFS partners? No, no, the LFS partners, uh, okay, have been carrying inventory in terms of winter wear. That's the reason there has been a shift of uh, month for the next season's uh, sales. Understood. Understood. Uh, and sir, if we have to compare uh, our winter wear performance this year versus last year, why, uh, I reckon we had also preponed some of our sales in Q2. So if we look at a like-to-like -like number for winter wear as a category, uh, what would the growth rates be or what is the uh, you know performance been? Yeah, winter wear this year has degrown for us. Sure. So, what would the numbers look like, sir? Uh, and an absolute number, if you look at. Uh, on a category mix, we generally don't give, but I'm saying that okay, the the, the category mix has deep grown this year. Sure. And uh, do are we left with any of the winter wear in, inventory with us, which you know uh, might be liquidated at a cost going forward, uh, or some discounts that you have to give in the uh, coming quarters? of the inventory uh, for the winter wet stock and uh, adequate provisions have been provided for the same. Okay, okay, sure. And sir, uh, my, sec uh, my next question is on your cost control measures, right? If you look at your uh, employee cost and OPEX cost, it has been in a tight band. So, any is there anything that you are holding back on which could possibly come uh, in the next few quarters? Not on the employee cost, and which is the other category, you said? The other expenses. I don't think there will be a okay, drastic change in this, both, both these heads. Sure, sure. And sir, uh, in, on the gross margin side, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've done uh, well versus, uh, you know, our preced, uh, previous quarter. So is it that that you've taken some price hike in certain categories or, you know, is it the raw material benefit uh, that we're getting? And are these gross margins sort of sustainable going forward? It's the raw material prices which has gone down. Uh, 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 that's the reason, okay, you see there will be an expand in terms of the GP margins. And we, and we feel that it will get normalized in the next two quarter structure. Okay. So will we be passing on this benefit in terms of any schemes or discounts or reducing our prices? Maybe I'll do it. I will do some marketing perspectives, or may I increase, uh, decrease the price structure? Or okay, it depends on how the competitors evaluate the same. Also, along with it. Sure, sure, got it. And sir, uh, your entry into the kit segment, uh, you know, it looks promising. But uh, as a group, you must have thought of, uh, you know, some numbers of scaling this uh, in your business mix. So, if you could share, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, light on that, any percentage of your revenues that should come from kids wear or uh, As I said, any it's numbers a, that on scalability. It is, it's still under incubation stage. Let's discuss this on quarter two of the next year. Sure. Sir, are you through with your question, sir? Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Chiraksha from White Pine. Please go ahead.